Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Italian and Kazuki Live. Obviously, I'm in a very awkward angle. Um, I have shorn all my hair off because I am currently training for the Dopey Marathon. So if you see me playing with it to get it out of my face, I'm still learning how to manage it. I literally chopped it off on Monday. Well, I didn't chop it off. I went and got someone else to chop it off. Um, but I did a great clips, which they don't style your hair. And with the curls, it does take a little bit of management. So I'm just learning how to work with it again. Technically, I'm supposed to be able to tuck it behind my ears, but because of the curl bounce, it doesn't really do that. Anyway, what we're here to do is we're here to finish cutting up the pieces for the necessary clutch wallet, and then to interface the pieces for the necessary clutch wallet, I am cutting Obi uh, clutch wallets and then inter or, uh, lining them in kimono um, in preparation for Omatsuri in Calgary. <clears throat> That's an email notification telling me that I am live, like I didn't know. Anyway, um, I'm down to cutting the, I think I've got all the zip tabs. I've got one more set of zip tabs that I need to cut. And then I need to cut um, lining for the actual, like, pockets. I'm, I'm going to be cutting the lining out of the lining from the kimono because, realistically, this is going in a pocket you're not going to see it. And I think I've already cut the majority of the actual exteriors. Yeah, I've cut one, two, three. So I've got two for that one. And then I've got one there. Okay, so I need one more. Oh, I hope those aren't card backs. No, it looks like I actually do need to cut. We'll figure this out as I go. Anyway, everything needs to be interfaced. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, so this will be the cuts for the actual, like, pieces for the pockets. It looks like. It looks like I probably can get that out of that. Even if I can't, I could cut them in half, and then I wouldn't have to worry about it as much. I'm actually running out of fabric. <laughs> so that's, that's something to consider as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do have a little bit of a summer cold right now, so if you hear me kind of snuffly and hoarse, that's why. Um... Okay, so I think I still need to do, I definitely know I need to do pocket linings. I'm pretty sure, I, looks like I might need to do pocket exteriors because I think these are actually card pocket backs. Let's just look at the measurements here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, based on that measurement, that's a card pocket back, I think. Card pocket, card slot back. Yeah, that would be card slot backs. Okay, so I've got all card slot backings are cut from that. And then I need, I say I already did the floral, but apparently, I don't know. Well, if I end up cutting some more, then I end up cutting some more. And this can actually, could actually be used if it's got a big enough piece for an exterior pocket. Oh, yeah, because I need two pieces of that size. All right. Let's just head into this. This is gonna, it's gonna, the easiest way through or for this is through it. So let me just shuffle you guys over a little bit so that you can actually see what I'm working on. And then we'll head into this. Now, I did actually have to pull quite a bit of fabric from the swirl kimono. Um, so the swirl kimono is this one with all the dots. And why I call it a swirl kimono is because when you see it in person, it actually kind of swirls around on the fabric. And what ended up happening there is there was actually, it was a very well-loved kimono. And there was a bunch of actual stains on it. So I've had to pull all those pieces, which has reduced the amount of kimono that I'm actually able to use significantly. And then the hem of it was actually also stained. So it was obviously worn outside and like well-worn, which is awesome. It's exactly what you want, like is that history behind it. But uh it did make it a little bit more difficult to find pieces and I don't have as much of it as I anticipated when I purchased it. So that's been fun to learn. All right. So we need to cut two swirls, one red. The red is this fabric back here and a floral for the inner pockets and then the outer pockets for the inner pockets. Right. One, two, three, and one. Okay. 
And then, oh yeah, and then we're going to do the inner kimono. Okay, sweet. I don't know where the inner kimono pieces went because I know I cut some of them, but that's okay. I'll just deal with it later. Whatever. All right, so let's line this up so that I'm actually cutting it properly. So I needed two of the swirls, and I need them to be... So I need four pieces of the swirl fabric because it's two pieces at the measurement. And then one piece is interfaced, one piece is not. So one piece will go into the actual pile to be interfaced later. Like, where's my rotary cutter? I know I had it. It's been a, like, tiny... Wow, okay. It is. seems like this summer has just been full of, like, small disasters. And this week is no exception. It's been a bit better. At least my husband is home to help manage the small disasters. But it's just, like, never ending. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, I did get the Glenda purses done, though, which I'm very happy. All I need to do... They need their leather handles, which is, like, a separate day. That's not happening today. It's probably going to happen right before the event because that's just how I roll. And, uh, yeah, the sniffles. I took some day quills so that hopefully I'm not sniffling through this whole thing. <laughs> Lovely. Um, all right. So that would be one. And then do you know what we're going to do is I'll do a pieced lining from the other one just so that I can use the most fabric possible most expeditiously let's see so I think what I can do is do this and then this will be half and then I add a seam allowance so that we can sew it together like this and then yeah because there's a little bit of a slice in there so what we'll do is we'll actually take it down here line it up here and then that'll be the seam allowance yes like here there we go and then I'll give myself a little bit of extra wiggle room because honestly, then I can I can cut it down easier later than add it on. Obviously, you can't add fabric once you cut it. So we'll just add some up there. Figure it out later. Okay, so there's the two swirls. Um, excuse me. Ugh. How do I get a summer cold? Like, my kids aren't even sick. I don't know where I would have gotten it if my kids aren't sick. It's ridiculous. All right, there's a couple extra zipper tabs if I need them. This piece is still interfaced and probably going to be used for something else. Actually, if this is a good size, we'll use this for like a key. Oh, right. It's not interfaced all the way. I need to flip my cutting mat. <laughs> all the like actual measurement markings are on that side. So it's just like, ugh. But the thing was, is I was working on that side because this side had all the fabric on the floor. And so I couldn't actually work on this side. I cleared all that fabric up and I could now I can work on this side and it's way more comfortable. And if I'm talking at the camera, all the fabric's behind me, which is way more aesthetically pleasing than like all of this stuff over here. Anyway. Perfect. That can be used for a key fob. Maybe let's square it up here and make sure that's wide enough. Yep, it's actually that is as close to perfect as we can get with that. So we'll make a key fob out of that. And, zoom. and I will do a better cut than that, but that gives that puts it in the frame of reference that I need for the key fob so I know what I'm doing with it. There we go. More kimono for the scraps. Okay, so that is the swirls. Linings are separate, so I'm not going to worry about that until I've cut all of this other stuff. Oh, there they are. Oh, Katie. Why are they over there? Oh, right, because I'm going to line them in the light. Okay, well, that's okay, because this can actually be used for something else later. That is fine. Right, because the pocket... So, I've got two separate piles going for interfacing. So, this is a light interfacing pile, and then this one down here, which you... Right here is getting like a papery kind of interfacing. Right, right. Okay. That's why it's like, you've already cut the linings and all of that. Okay. Those look like they're probably the actual linings. Okay. I said I cut three linings so far. I've cut the spirals for the exteriors. Okay. So we're just going through the swirls. Choop. I've cut three linings. So I need to do three more linings, the floral and the red. 
do the red because it's right here and easy peasy to get. And there's a lot of it. And then we'll work on the florals. All right. So what have we been up to this week? Uh, obviously, I haven't streamed since Monday, so we've done a little bit. Um, still training for the Dopey Marathon. Obviously, that's gonna be that's not gonna end until January. Um, we went to spin yesterday, was which was really good. And then what else did we do? Sorry, I just realized I need to, there's math involved. <laughs> Okay, we are going to cut this a little bit generous because it's wibbly wobbly and moves everywhere. So we're going to actually cut the full. Wait, if I stretch this, will it work? I think that that is actually the full piece I need if we just kind of, once it gets ironed out and stuff like that. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I think the extra got taken up actually by the ruler being on it. So let's see. Let's see if that's uh, what I need. Um, so yeah, we actually had a friend visit. She's been teaching in China for the past while, and obviously it was difficult to get out of mainland China for a very long time. <laughs> um, she's actually in Hong Kong now teaching there. She's been teaching internationally since whew, 2015, I think, so quite a while. And yeah, it was really good to see her. She hasn't even met the kids, so that was like... I, yeah, I don't think she's been back since 2019, the summer of 2019. So we didn't get pregnant until like September of 2019. And uh, <coughs> obviously, again, it's been a little bit difficult to, well, partially stay in contact. And then also like just to, for her to visit at all. There, there's the seven and a half mark. Okay, sweet. So that will work. And this is why I'm interfacing this. It's because it's like, shift, 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 shift. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle. All right. Get in line. <laughs> and I need it to be that wide. And that actually does have a little bit extra play in there. Because we'll, basically, I'm going to cut down a large piece. And then we're going to interface it. And then I'll cut down the proper size for it. Because that's just how it's going to roll today. All right, so there's the red one that I needed to cut, and then we need to cut three florals. Now, the floral doesn't move quite as much, but, you know, and then we're going to do linings afterwards. Okay, that doesn't have enough fabric in it to do anything with, so I've got more of it right here. I'm pretty sure a sleeve is what we actually need for a couple of these. Don't worry, that's not the fabric. It's just the stitches popping. There we go. And then we'll take the lining out of the sleeve. Actually, there will pop the stitches here. It's like the most disturbing and the most satisfying sound ever is popping these stitches. It's like, please don't rip the fabric. But it's also far easier to do it this way than to seam rip it. There, I'll do it right up against the top so you can hear it. If that bothers you, mute your mic and I will give you a thumbs up when it actually finishes. All right, we're all done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mute your mic? No, mute, mute your speakers is what I meant to say, but you know. I guess I do still need to take this off, but that can happen after I cut it. Okay, so I need three of these floral ones. So we need six cuts on the measurement listed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half. We're going to be able to do at least two cuts this way. And then we'll see what we can do for the third cut. I'll probably have to pull a little bit more fabric, but that's okay. There's lots here. Actually, or this might be 
but this it should be very similar or the same width as the other piece. Because kimono and obi are all woven on at least very similar loom sizes. Oh, that is nowhere near. Okay, never mind. It is not as large. Let me see here. Nope. Okay, sweet. It's like half inch short. That's okay. We can use the fabric for other things later on. So let's see here. You need it to be that and that, and then this and this. Let's wait. By that. So it needs to be this. By this. So this is also prepped for Knit City. It doesn't look like it's prepped for Knit City, but I am going to be bringing the wallets as well as the purses, anything that doesn't sell at Omatsuri to Knit City. Um, obviously, because I have worked very hard on them. <laughs> um, they will be coming to the website before Knit City, hopefully. Um, I actually have finished the big bag lot that I was working on for the longest time. So that is um, pretty much ready to go on the website. I just got to clip the like last stitches, basically. And then it can come on the website. And then what else? I'm going to be restocking Market Mall here soon because I did get a big batch of big bags done. We'll go do that along with some large box bags. They are, however, moving. So I'm just waiting to see where they're moving, basically, at this point. All right. That's where this crookedness comes in. We're just going to ignore it and cut around it and cut a generous amount because I don't know where the under fabric is. And then we'll square it up once I interface it and it's actually stabilized. So there we go. And then I need, so that's one, two. All right, that's going over here because it needs light interfacing. And actually the zipper tabs, I don't normally interface them, but we're going to interface them today because the kimono is more delicate than what I normally use. Okay, and then the question is, I think I can get one more cut here. Yep, like that. And then I think I will just piece the last one from the stuff here. There we go. Now I know I say I typically try to avoid doing double cuts like this, but in this situation, I don't want to have to inter like I'm not interfacing the whole piece in this case because I don't know what I'm using it in in future. So I'm cutting it down a little bit large. Yes, it will create some fabric waste, but I don't want to have like a bunch of fabric waste from me interfacing it with the wrong interfacing which is something that I was noticing was starting to happen as I was like, I was like, I'll just interface the whole thing. But like some of this doesn't need the interfacing that I'm, or it needs a different interfacing than what I'm using currently, blah, blah, blah. So that's why we're here doing it like this right now. All right, and then this can just get cut down like that. I will interface and sew it together and then I'll square it up. So there is the three cuts of floral that I needed. Now we just need to do the remainder of the, excuse me, <clears throat> of the linings. Oh, I just got super tired. Okay. Red floral are done. So I said I need three more lining pieces. And that is at that size. So here is one piece to cut down. Here's another piece I can cut down. And I think that will be three right there. Actually, I think this might be three right here. Since it basic, it was able to do two time with the uh, with that. And then I'll pop the stitches on this and then we'll get everything under the nice warm steam press. Actually, I should, no, I need to get the interfacing cut. Should I steam press before, or should I cut the interfacing first? No, all these need a press, so I'm going to turn the press on. Apparently, I should have... I always say this. I should drink more coffee before I do these streams. <laughs> and do I take my own advice? No, I do not. So dumb. Okay. So there's one, two, three. Or two more. They're gonna get light interfacing. This is such light fabric. It's nuts. Like I think, yeah, it's like essentially see-through. It's so delicate. So this is actually the lining on the kimono, which is super cool. 
Um, but that does make it like a lot thinner than everything else. Is that deep enough? That is deep enough. We can use that. Sweet. There we go. There's all the linings. So now I am going to go through and press everything to before I do the interfacing cuts because it'll take all these wrinkles out of it and just make it easier to interface to it in general. I hope that's my theory. Um, and then I'm getting really bored with cutting. So once the interfacing is on, actually, I think once everything is pressed, no, I should just stick to it and do the interfacing. I know I said I got, I'm getting bored, but that's a me problem. Um, and I do need to press everything and then we'll do the interfacing. If I get the interfacing cut, then I'm going to move to sewing. Um, on stream. I do have a massage at 4.30. So I've got about three hours that I can be on for now. And so we're working with getting all of this pressed. Um, the, this one is a really delicate. It's a Hawaii. The color is spectacular. I love the color. It's definitely, it feels like silk. I don't do burn tests on these usually, just so I'm not wasting much fabric or any. And it does have these kind of like, I guess, embossed leaves. I don't know what you would call that, but they're like in the weave. I don't know if that's actually showing up. And sorry for the sniffles. I do have a summer cold. It's kind of like, ugh, where did I even catch a summer cold? The kids aren't sick. So <laughs> that was absolutely lovely to have on camera. All right. So I'm going to like turn you guys, pivot you, and we're going to press all of these flat. And then I'm going to put this here as a separator. And that'll be the separation for the different weights. Yeah. Because these all need like paperweight. And then those are going to need crafts, like uh, almost more of a papery kind of stabilizer. It's like card pockets and stuff like that. So the card pockets get a paperier stabilizer so that um, it's like, it's nice and like stiff and proper. I'm going to move my serger so I'm not standing over it. Oh goodness, that is heavy. It needs a more permanent spot, but the problem with that is it's that the kids like to play with the tension nods on it. Nods. Same as my industrial. and They do the same thing. Alright, we're all set. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. It just kind of has to be. So we'll get these placed in here. Obviously, these are going to be a little bit more difficult. I am going to put a pressing cloth over, which is just a cut of cotton. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just flatten them out. Actually, we should do it this way because, yeah, there we go. That'll help. Hold it down a bit better and uh, just make it a bit easier. And it should actually press it down then. All right, there we go. We go. Okay. Sweet. Typically, I would do more with them being this thin, but with that much pressing needing to be done, it needs to be individual pieces. All right. So there's that one. Then we're going to try and press like a lot of these seam lines out of these guys. Love the timer on this. Yeah, that's already better. All right. So like I said, not perfect. But definitely better. Um, that's going to make it a lot easier to actually press. We're going to actually press these again. Open up that seam allowance there. And then we'll yeah, open up the seam allowance. Open! There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Press it down this way again. Might give it a little bit of steam. Most of the steam will actually be sucked up. I would not recommend this normally with silk. Oh, I actually need to fill my reservoir. So that was useless. Oh my goodness. Isn't that how it always goes? I think I talked about that the other day. I need to fill the reservoir. But it's like, because I've been working with the silk, I'm not. Yeah, there we go. That's better. So a little bit of crimp on the side here, but most of that will be squared up with the actual cuts. Not worried about it. This one needs to be pressed both directions. A little bit of folding each way. That's okay. That and that and out. Okay. Now 
one's being cranky, so we're gonna go this way with it, like that. And then I'm gonna put some of these heavier pieces over top of it so that we get some opening on those ones. Actually, and then this one needs to be finessed a little bit too. So yeah, I try to load the steam press with as much as I can. That's going to like work. And because these are so thin, that, that is a lot of fabric typically. Right. That's also why they need to be interfaced so badly, those, because like there is nothing to them really to like make sure that they're not going to like fray and wear out, especially on like a high use object such, such as a wallet. So we're just gonna lay as many pieces as I think are gonna work. I think get the zipper tabs in there and then we'll go to the next round afterwards. The sniffles. <laughs> All right. I will be masking up for my massage appointment because I do not want to get her sick. But I also know that a massage is going to help kind of kick it on my system sooner. So that is what we're going to do. All right. Come on. Actually, I think I'm going to fold that back and like do a little bit of press press there. Just finger press. Yeah, that helped. Okay. Pressing cloth and down and press. So the run on Monday, I'm up to the nine mile run. I started the Adobe Challenge training. I kind of bumped it up by a couple weeks because then it lined up with my 10K for Stampede Road Race. Um, so on Sunday, actually, what would normally be my Monday run, I'm going to go do a nine mile run. Um, I think it's only supposed to be a five or seven mile run at this point, but it's like, eh. It gives me a little bit of leeway if we get really sick with the kids or like I need to take a couple weeks off. I started seeing a physio for, I've had a little bit of plantar fasciitis since November. So I finally started seeing a physio for that because everything that I was doing just didn't cut it. And we've got the coverage, so I may as well use it. Um, instead of just letting it wallow and waste away. So... That was really good. Uh, it's basically he said that the right side is really weak, which is not surprising considering the broken ankle. It's also where I think my hips are extremely tight, so that's not going to help. Um, all of that. <laughs> okay, I think we can put one more piece in here because it's that super thin. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna pull this off. So this piece here is actually a lining piece from the neck or like, oop, come on. Oh, you're grumpy. Um, I think these were from the underarm actually. Now this kimono I don't think ever got worn. And you can tell that because, where were these? No, sorry. So this was actually in the sleeve part at the wrist. Instead of being like pure white at the wrist. That's what it was. Go in here like that. And then we'll pop the pressing cloth over top of it. The old press. Need to pull the that fabric off of this next piece as well. There we go, that's a little bit happier. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see how everything did. That all looks decent, at least. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. It's going to be pressed onto the interfacing, but it just, just that little bit of extra care to make sure that we're getting, getting good results. I wonder if this actually should be pressed with two layers of the light interfacing. Might not be the worst idea. I'll see how it does after the first layer. And then if it needs a second layer, we'll do a second layer. All right. You were very thin and fluttery, and I appreciate it, but you need to get into the press and be pressed, please. Impress me. Ha ha ha. <laughs> That's a terrible joke. Okay. There we go. It's a long weekend in Canada, or at least today, in, or Monday in Alberta. So 
We're going to go and do the run on Sunday in the city because most people get out of the city in a long weekend. And then we're going to be mostly hunkered down because it's just like, it's too busy to go anywhere. And there's so much construction in Cochrane right now. It's just like, I saw a meme about it the other day. It's like, slide to the right, slide to the left, roundabout. Um, because they're doing like highway construction and construction in town and just everything keeps getting jogged one way and the other way. And it's, uh, I shouldn't complain. I was listening. To, uh, the friend that w was visiting last night used to live in Jakarta. And she said some of the construction held up, turned to like, 45 minute drive into a three hour drive and I'm like oh my goodness here I'm complaining about like a 15 minute wait at our lights but uh for our area it is significant <laughs> so I don't know I will I'm very excited for this work to be done basically what they're doing is they're making major improvements to our main thoroughfare through town uh going north south and east west and so it's going to be excellent once it's done but this in-between period is not fun <laughs> never is though right it's always better once it's done okay there we go that will work and then what i'll do is i'll just nudge it up with the pressing cloth here i think can i like that there we go yeah roll it down out there we go press all right, so we are to the actual, I don't know what this piece is for, but I'm going to press it anyway. <laughs> That's just the story of how these, this cutting session is going. There we go. And then this is going to need to press on this side, like this. So we're to the actual, like, flaps for the wallets. Um, they don't need pressing. I think the in, like, interior of the flap might need pressing but the exteriors don't so we'll take a double look here and see if i need to actually do it or not but i think we're pretty good with just going ahead with a lot of them especially these exteriors because what's going to happen is i am going to press interfacing to them since they're mostly flat i don't think i need to worry too much about it these ones had to be done because of those curves and stuff like that and very obvious lines so a lot of those lines will get eaten up when they actually get sewn, which is nice, but like it'll make pressing interfacing to all of this way easier. I feel like this is an interior, but we're just we're just gonna press it and see. And I said I'm not gonna press the exterior flaps, but we're just gonna do it because it will make them look nicer, I guess. <laughs> it's not gonna add that much work. That's part of it. That one can just stay like that. That one actually can just stay like that too and we'll layer some more pieces around oops so this is really cool it's actually um it shows all of that stitching i guess it's not stitching it's actually woven into the fabric it was really cool because i ended up we uh caroline and i when we went to just kyoto ended up at the craft museum which i didn't know existed it's outside heon jingu Super nice. It was really quiet, which was cool. Um, not like a highly touristed spot. And um, it, it, it explained the different kimono and weaving techniques better than I've ever seen explained. Have I done a lot of research on it? No. But like this was a nice like Cliff's Note version of like all the different techniques that they used to like weave the kimono and the obi and then like different examples of it and everything. Um, I posted this information to my stories, so I'll have to actually highlight it again in the highlights for the trip, but it was like a really informative visit, like, and just the perfect amount of information without being overwhelming. And it also was able to like lead if I want to, when I want to do more research, because I probably should, um, <laughs> uh, it, it'll be available for me to do now that I've got like kind of a basic grasp of what I'm looking for even. <laughs> Because sometimes that's half the battle is fi figuring out what you're even looking for. Is that game pressed twice? Yes. Yes, it is. And that's fine. Okay, so this is the last piece to actually press for the fronts. Then we'll go into the interiors, which are going to be the stuff that get the... Um, they get the paper interfacing, so they need to be a little bit better pressed. This pressing is for the exteriors. is just kind of to, like, make it nice and 
easier to press the um, the lighter interfacing to it. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually press the stabilizer that's going to happen to the interior of the flap. Um, so not the nice side, not the exterior side. I'm going to put it into the interior because then I'm going to install the snap on the interior side. And so I want the stabilizer on the interior and not the exterior. Because these ones aren't going to get the rivet snaps. These ones are going to get the larger magnetic snaps. Although the rivet snaps might work. Um, nah, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. I don't want I don't want the rivet on the outside of the the actual flap in this case. So we'll see. Now these are all um, what I assume are secondhand obi. The way I buy them is at a temple market and secondhand shops. That does not mean that they're not necessarily new. Um, the floral kimono that I cut up, I'm pretty sure was brand new. Um, it looked like it still even had its like tack strips in for its sleeves and everything like that. So that was super cool. Um, but like, I never know. I don't, I would assume that most of these are like extras that people aren't looking for. The prices indicate that they're not like highly valued antique kimono. <laughs> and actually the wear patterns on them also tell me that they're very likely ones that people have just sold on either estate sale style or because like they're out of style. They want something new, like that sort of stuff. They're clothes. So now some of them are very fancy clothes and formal wear, but that's kind of the gist I get from these temple markets. And actually it's really fun because most of these temple markets I've been visiting since I was an exchange student there um, back in 2009, 2010. It's always nice to go back and see the new vendors and stuff like that that have come in as well and like old vendors that I've seen since I was there as a student and it's quite a few of them actually which is super cool. Sorry, I had to sneeze and I did not want to sneeze in the mic. That would have been horrendous. All right. So hopefully I got that mic muted in time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those are all nice and ready. We'll pop a couple others under here while I press the top again. I don't even remember what these are for. I know I cut lining pieces out of this. So I'll have to I'll have to press them and then and put the interface on them and then figure out where they actually fit into the bag. <laughs> purse wallet. Like I said, this is just how this cutting session has been going. I'm actually kind of excited to get back to making my bags because it's like the wallets are awesome. Okay, this can, can just be folded over and be pressed. Um, but the problem is, is that like I'm not super familiar with the patterns. And so it's just like it's been a little bit of a, like, it's been a learning curve, I guess, is the best way to put it. But a good one, but still a learning curve. All right, we're actually going to fold these together. Um, just be a little bit more expedient with our pressing time. I do not want to be here all day. I do not have all day to be here either. And uh, most of them are going to end up being folded anyway. So, and when I put the interfacing on them, we'll be pressing them flat. So like this is just to make sure that the other seam lines are being pressed out a little bit better. Yeah, because after this prep for Omatsuri, it is straight back into sewing. I need I know I've had the pick your owns for a while. I need to get them sewn up and out. Yeah, see that just helped press a lot of that. A lot of the stuff out. Again, doesn't need to be perfect, just needs to be kind of done. That's card pockets. That's what that is. So this is very likely card pockets as well. Yep. Anyway, um, yeah, pick your owns will be next. Uh, and then I'm going to cut and serge cake cozies. And then we're going to work on Paula's order. And that'll involve, we're going to do the large box bags, the kato, and all that. The big bags for Knit City are prepped, at least for the numbers that I anticipate needing um, for Knit City. If you are joining us for either, or joining me for either Knit City or um, Omatsuri, 
they both have the tickets available online right now. Omatsuri is a two-day event this year. Uh, they, well, a one-and-a-half-day event. They have a Japanese comedian and Japanese drag show and vendors on Friday night. And then on Saturday, they have their usual festival. I'll be vending on Saturday because um, kiddos, but I'm going to be setting up on Friday, which is going to actually help significantly. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. And then Knit City is September 22nd to 24th. I will have a ticket to give away for the lecture on Friday night. And then I do also have two marketplace tickets available to give away for the weekend. Um, the classes and the keynote on, on September 22nd. And then the actual market is September 23rd to 24th. Super excited. Knit City is one of my favorite events of the year. So I think it probably is my favorite event of the year. So, yeah, so that's going to be fun. I am excited to be there again. All right. And get some of these pieces in as well. These are exteriors and interior linings. Also cut from the kimono. And, or obi, depending on what piece it is. And we're almost actually through all the pieces. We've got a couple more card, three more card pockets, a couple more others. And then we'll be able to start the interfacing. So this is actually going smoother and quicker than I anticipated, which is always nice. I have a super secret project coming up with Caroline. Um, we're hoping to have it together for Knit City. As long as I get my acting gear, we should. So that's just, if you're watching the live or you're watching the replay, that's just a little hint about what's upcoming here. It's going to be fun. I'm excited about it. I'm actually really excited about this whole year. This whole year has been going really well for me, which is nice because it the business does take quite a bit of time away from my kids. So I, it's always appreciated when it actually pays back for me as well. Oh, I am ready for a nap, though. Okay, I'm always ready for a nap. Always down for a nap. <laughs> My husband doesn't nap, and uh, it's just like, oh man, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't really know how you do it. But also, my youngest last night, so they do like a stretch in their beds, and then they uh, they'll come into our bed, and that's fine. But the problem last night is my youngest came to bed and didn't go back to sleep. The whole point of bringing them into our bed is that they're going to fall asleep again. And that's just not how it went last night. So I'm like, that. now that I'm thinking about it, that's probably the explanation for why I'm tired today. That in the run this morning. So my um, average pace is finally dropping back down. So I need to be an average pace of 10 minutes over the whole marathon for Disney. Like, every single kilometer has to be 10 minutes. Um, because <laughs> um, you're running through the parks, so you got to be in and out of the parks and, like, onto a certain part by the time the park's open. Um, although I don't know the exact route yet. They haven't released the maps yet. Anyway, um, so the minimum speed that you can be is 10 minutes per kilometer. So the last couple of days I've been training at like 9.59 to 9.58. So I'm getting there. Um, the trend that my Apple Watch has picked up on is that I've actually dropped my pace by a full minute in the last year. So that's exciting. That's a nice like proof of progress. So hopefully by Disney, I want to drop it to like nine and a half minutes per kilometer. That would be nice to hit before Disney if I don't get faster than that. And, like, obviously, I would prefer to be faster. But, like, my goal would be to be nine and a half minutes by Disney. So, all right. We're going to turn this off just so it's not taking energy. And then we're going to turn around again and do the interfacing. I need to actually grab the paper interfacing. 
I'm gonna put the searcher back right there for now. It was in my shelf, but I moved my cricket there right for now, which is actually way better because I'm using it in this room. All right, I'm gonna mute my mic and go grab a drink and then we will do the interface. Oh, and I gotta grab the paper interfacing. So I'll be back in like two minutes. Okay, I just made sure I blew my nose, so hopefully I'm not quite so, yeah, no, there, that sounds better, at least it sounds better on my end. Okay, um, I probably should actually clear up a little bit of the disaster that's on this desk right now, just so I'm not getting, like, confused with what, well, no, I'm not going to get confused with what pieces are where, because these are the pieces that need to be interfaced. They look pretty. But, like, all of these kimono pieces can just be slung unceremoniously, yes, back into the bin. Because, realistically, I'm going to have to go through that same process of cutting them like that every time. Ooh, will my mic allow me? <gasps> yes, excellent, I did it. Okay. Mic cable for the win. That's kimono. You can live with the OB for now, just so you're off the table. That's OB for eyeglass cases. This is extra stabilizer and interfacing just for bits and pieces. That is the cut down thing. That's the front flat piece. That is stabilizer from the OB, which we're probably not going to use, but I'll just set aside for now. I hope you guys enjoy the stream of consciousness because it's like I'm just saying what I'm actually thinking. This is what goes through my head when I'm working by myself. <laughs> basically saying it out loud now, and I don't know if that's weird or entertaining. Uh, those scraps can go in here. Okay, those pieces are for the obi bags that I, or the wedge bags I want to make. Do, do, do. I'm going to keep some of that lighter interfacing. Now, I think, so this was actually the lining that came, that was in the orange, or the purple uh, hoodie, which a hoodie is a uh, kimono jacket but I think that might actually be like it's cotton feels like cotton but that might be a really nice cool kind of like lining for the actual wedge bags instead of using the kimono for the wedge bags because I don't think the kimono would hold up very well for a, like purse I will make the like inner pockets out of the kimono so that'll look pretty but actually I think that that's the best way to use that to use that up. All right, so let's get this sorted. So far, we're good. That's scrappy enough that it can go in the scrap bag. These are actually the ties from the Hawaii. So basically, it's a kimono jacket, and then these would be used as the ties at the front. They are not in amazing shape. They do these. I would actually wash. I think there's silk threads again, but realistically, there's nothing to like bleed like on the obi and kimono. Like the colors shouldn't bleed into the lighter colors. Oh right, this needs to have the ring light behind it, so you can see details. But I'm gonna set those aside and I'll figure out what to do with them later. I do think I actually figured I've the super secret project has like spawned a bunch of like other thoughts and ideas, and uh, so I. Think I think I have a plan for some of like the OBG may, which is the little rope that goes on top of the OB. 
as a decoration. Um, I think I've got plans. I think I've got plans. I picked some up in November because I was like, these will work for this. And I haven't followed through, but I think I know what I'm going to do with them now. And it's going to be adorable. Okay. Um, let's pick your owns and a couple more things I need to cut for other like requests. This is all fabric that needs to go away. Yeah. So throw that down here. It's going to go in a hidey hole and that's just where it's going to stay. And now that we're mostly tidy, we can go through and actually cut our interfacing. I actually have another like curtain rod holder that I want to put under my desk to hold this bolt, especially now that, uh, I'm going to go to all fusible instead of sewing interfacing. Um, that choice is a cost choice, <laughs> not necessarily a me choice, but, um, yeah, I need to do the other curtain rod holder on this side. Now that I have this set up the way that I think I want it set up. Okay. Let's actually move this over here with OB because they're going to sit there. And then if I clear it like that and clear this, this way, I can just go on the floor. Go. That didn't work as intended. All right. <laughs> Let's go pull some up on the table and then it will stay. Fought the interfacing beast and I lost, but now I have one. I triumphed in the end. All right. If you weren't here for that. I literally I was pushing the interfacing roll off and it all fell off instead of keeping this like tail. Ugh. Okay, there we go. Interfacing is always a beast to be contended with. Okay. So the pieces that are going to get the Paper interfacing are the card slot pockets because I find that it gives a really nice crisp edge. Um, and then what else gets the paper? I don't know. Well, I've got it split up here and ready to go. I think the exterior interior does as well. But we'll figure it out. Actually, I think it looks like, I think I can actually do it this way. And that's like the most efficient way to do it that again this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect it just has to be mostly right because what we're going to do is we're going to cut it across the bottom here of these like card slot pockets then obviously I can trim it down as well now yes I want to be efficient with my fabric obviously but it's like her interfacing but it's yeah it'll be easier this way I think that that's probably Okay, yeah, I'm cutting for the exterior pieces as well. And then that's card slots. Okay, yeah, that makes sense to me. Kind of, maybe, I don't know. That's what makes sense to me right now. Okay, so I can get two. Perfect. Do, 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 do. Trim. Trim a little bit extra of interfacing. These, so I keep these pieces, like these off cuts around typically and use them for other things. What other things? I don't know. Figure it out. It's just, it, that's how it goes. Figure it out later. All right. So there's the card pocket cuts for two. Shift that out of the way so I don't actually cut the OB or the linings or any of the other pieces because that would suck. And then we're going to shears. I'm going to shuffle these over a little bit because we do know that they're wiggly pieces and lie. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that they're currently all on the interfacing with like a good margin of error. And since I've got this extra here anyway, I may as well. There we go. And then we're going to just go straight up the middle like that. And then we're going to go straight up the middle. Well, not the middle, but the side of that one. And then I've got a nice... Another extra piece. Okay. 
Sweet. I think this is probably going to be one of the fastest pits. This is actually cutting the interfacing. All right. Should I interface it as, or should I fuse it as I go? That would be the smarter idea, probably, but I don't feel like doing it. So we're not going to. I'm going to lay it on the press, though. That's what I'm going to do. Part of my debate about that was, like, where am I putting this now that I've cut it? Because that's stiff. <laughs> like I said, welcome to my stream of consciousness as I'm, like, working. Okay, so we're going to do the other card slot here. Oof. Like that. And I'm pretty sure there's some card slots in the purple as well. Okay. Shift it up so that there's more room on the bottom here. I am thinking that the uh, I really should do there. And yeah, actually we'll do this alongside of this one here. So these are exterior interiors. Because it looks like it can stack three and that's a nice even cut for everyone. Or decently even. It is not an even cut. All right, well, I get two. <gasps> well, look at that. I can get two. And then I think I can get four. And then I don't have as much leftover interfacing. Can I get four? I can get four. Sweet. All right. Uh, yes, I could actually cut these out properly. Um, but the thing about this is, is that this is the piece. And so what I would actually save an interface and would just end up being thrown away anyway. So I may as well interface the whole piece. It, it is easier um, this way because the obi and kimono are so like whoop, 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 and wibbly wobbly and just they slither everywhere. Sneaky, slithery interfacing or... Uh, Obi and kimono, so it's just easier to actually fuse it in the rectangles and then trim it up and down to size afterwards. Do I hate having to do that? Yes, because I have to cut multiple times. Is it actually more efficient? Yes, it just doesn't feel like it. Well, okay, I'm telling myself it's more efficient. I don't actually know if it is. I'm assuming it is. See now, okay, so last week, here I come on stream and like there's no, like I plug my mic in and there's no little dots under my like stream. This week, it's like, yeah, here's the little dots saying that your mic is working. It's like, why didn't you have this last week? I don't get it. I can't even stream in Safari, which is what I typically use. I use Apple and I'm on a MacBook right now. And it's like, no, nope, you can only stream on Chrome. And I'm like, so what, what kind of update happened? Annoying. Annoying. Okay. Anyway. Technology. It's amazing. And so annoying all at the same time. Can I use a rotor cutter for this too? Yes, but I don't know. My shears are in my hand right now. Okay. Go. Shoom. And we're going to cut this one right here. Then we're going to cut this one right there. And we're going to put everything like this. This paper uh, fuse, all my interfacing actually comes from a Calgary, Calgary supplier. Um, and this, I don't, what did I buy this for? I bought this to do triangle pouches. Then I figured out that I don't actually like it in the triangle pouches. It's really stiff. It's like, it's very papery, which is fine. It just, it's for different uses then is basically what happened. And, uh, but I didn't know what the different uses were. I actually considered selling it because I was like, well, am I ever going to use it? There's no point in hanging on to it if I'm not going to use it. But I am glad I did because now I have a use for it. If you, it's a generic um, interfacing, but basically if you're using like craft uh Decor Bond 809 or something like that. That's what I would equate this to. At least from other people's descriptions of 809. Um, I've used a little bit of it, but not much. But that's what I would say this feels most similar to. All right, so that is aligning. Now, in this case, it would be useful to see. Yes, that is... 
that is actually a thing, right? I think so. I think, I, oh yeah, I would have just cut like a full straight across in this case. So that's why it's quite large. Okay, so the length needs to be the proper here, but I can scooch it off the interfacing because then I can line up all these pieces to actually use the full width of the interfacing. One moment. My husband just got back from physio, so we just had a check-in meeting, apparently. Uh, he's had knee pain, pain since he started running, pretty much. Um, but apparently it's already improved after two weeks, so that's good. That's actually amazing. It's insane how fast physio works sometimes. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit more piecemeal, obviously. Um, I don't know what those are for, the purple pieces, but uh, they are in the paper interfacing pile so we're just going to go with it and I will figure it out afterwards that is the motto for today figure it out after <laughs> I do know that these are card backs and I think that's partly what this is because uh, the card slots get mounted on a card slot back <coughs> excuse me so we'll see what happens I don't remember what I was talking about before, but that's okay. It's mostly just like, again, it's a live stream of consciousness, basically. Should have got him to bring me a coffee. <laughs> Maybe I'll get him to bring me coffee after he's done at the gym. All right. Coffee and a cookie. Snacks of champions. <laughs> Especially when they're dad's cookies. Those are the best ones to dip in coffee because they're so hard without the coffee. And then you dip it in coffee and it just like softens it up perfectly. It's so tasty. All right. There we go. Pop this over here. What time is it? 1.30. All right. So I'm going to work on stream for about two more hours and then I'll probably head off stream just to kind of finish up so that I'm ready to go when I need to go. Um, yeah. We'll see what happens. Okay. That needs to be cut here. Oh, that's such a messy cut. I'm, I'm going to trim that down a little bit because that's a little bit too much around the edges. <laughs> Problem is, is that then it ends up on the pressing cloth which means I could end up on the next piece. There you go. So that's still quite large, but it's better than having that whole swoop out from the side. So there we go. And then we're going to cut here. And we're going to pop that there. Can you pull this up? Like this. I will stop before I cut any more. <laughs> Oops, that would suck. Actually cut into the OB that I'm going to use for like the fronts. There we go. 
partly why I cleared the desk up is because it's just like, if stuff's on the desk, it's obviously way more likely to get actually sliced and diced and yeah, it's not good. All right, you do need to be spit it a little bit more, my friend. Before I cut your interfacing, you are slinking in here. Go, and then we'll turn and cut. I don't know why I didn't grab this one to go at the same time, but you know. Not like I don't have two hands to do that with. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four more exterior interior pieces. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we're almost through the paper interfacing. So that's actually really good. I thought it was good. I always dread cutting interfacing because it always feels like it takes so long. And it's such an integral part of like making the bags. Like it it's what takes it that step that it needs to go, sort of thing. But it sucks to cut it. <laughs> It doesn't suck. It's tedious. It's just, I don't know. And I, I, I haven't found any way to speed it up yet as part of it. So, and that's fine. But uh, it's just one of those things. Again, I've talked about this before on the stream and like around on like Instagram and stuff like that of like, it seems like there's like in every craft, there's always some sort of tedium. Um... For knitting, for a lot of people, it's swatching. <laughs> and then on the flip side of that, of like, if you knit sweaters, it's the sleeves. Because it's like, you knit this whole sweater body and you're like, yes, the sleeves will go so much faster. And then it's basically like knitting another sweater body because it's like, that's how much work there is in it. And in general, um, it is more work because you've got a bunch of shaping to do. So it's not like you can just knit round and round and round and round and round. Like you would on a sweater body, you have to pay attention. <laughs> so it's just, I don't know. But uh, I feel like, especially for these wallets and like the Glenda, like the purse itself comes together so quickly when she actually starts sewing it. And these wallets come together so quickly when she actually starts sewing it. But it's all this prep work. But I guess it would be the same with like weaving as well. Um, like having to. This is definitely a very common theme this week because I've brought up this weaving analogy almost every single stream. <laughs> sorry. If you've been watching me this week and I keep talking about the same things, I'm sorry. I don't have any new stories right now. So I'm just like, again, I'm just going with what comes into my mind. And that's not necessarily new things all the time. <laughs> anyway, um, but like on other projects, it's not the cutting. It's uh, like, so the Kato bags. I'm always like, oh, they're going to be so fast because it's like um, they're a drawstring bag. It's easy. <laughs> but they're drawstring bags with pockets. And when you're batch production as well, it always takes longer because it's like, so with them, they're kind of in an awkward spot. I can like batch all of their pockets and a bunch of other pieces. But then it's like you have to work on, I don't know, I end up sewing the... It just, I don't know, there's there's bog down points. The interiors on the Kato are definitely the bog down point because of the pockets. But whatever. Like, I, I enjoy them, and obviously they've got a different payoff of, like, I, of accomplishment points. But, like, or it's like, the large box bags are going to be so much faster after having sewn the uh, Kato bags because they don't have any pockets. And it's like, then I get to sewing the large box bag, and it's like... Right, they've got like handles. <laughs> what slowed me down on the box bags last time? I can't even remember, but it was like, I was like, yes, I get to sew box bags and it's gonna be so fast and easy. And then I was like, oh, right, it, it's, it's got its own bog down points. Needle stashers are fast and easy to sew, but then it's always getting myself motivated to actually get the snaps installed. <laughs> it's just like that, like last step. I don't know what's so hard to get myself motivated for that, but it is. I guess that's like the sleeve island of the needle stashers. That last step. All right. This is going pretty quick. I am enjoying this. I, I was dreading having to cut all this interfacing. And honestly, 
It's fine. Do I know what all the pieces are for? No, but we'll figure it out. So that's why I did the two piles. I do need to get like, I think I need to get some bins because the bins underneath have worked really well for like splitting up the bigger projects, but I think I need to get like little bins. Excuse me. So that I can like put, or maybe like a binder or something. I don't know, a bin. I need some like little bins because then I can put all the little bins together with like, so get the card slot pockets done. And then they can go in the little bin with the like with the project that they're supposed to be with and stuff. So I think that's well, that'll be something I do after Nit City probably when I have time to do a little bit more organization of the space. I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's not like it's that hard. It's just it would be nice to kind of have an idea of what I'm doing some days and just be able to grab a bin so like it's all cut out and then you grab the bin and then you go and sew whatever projects in the bin. Now, is this probably a fancy fancy idea that I'll never, like, it'll come to fruition and then I'll never use? Yes, probably. Although the just being able to chuck stuff in the bins underneath as I was cutting is working exactly how I wanted it to, so that was a good plan. I just need to label them so I remember. <laughs> what bins what? <laughs> All right, we're actually already done the paper interfacing. That's pretty sweet. Excuse me for one moment. All right. You didn't need to blow your eardrums out. Oh. Bye. You actually intended to go over now. All right. Now we're going to do the paper interfacing. So the paper interfacing, or the non-paper interfacing, sorry, is going to be for all these pieces that are like... Um, I put paper interfacing on the exterior pieces of the flap because the flap is also getting the stabilizer. So it does, I don't want paper interfacing with the stabilizer. It's too stiff. Um, so now we go with a lighter stabilizer. A lot of people, I would equate this to SF 101. It's very like a featherweight kind of lightweight interfacing. Um, but I don't know. I haven't I haven't used enough SF101, but that would be my idea of what SF101 is like. Alrighty. So this is partly why I wanted to like straighten these pieces out a little bit. Is now I can lay them out and their cuts will be a little bit straighter, kinda. There's wobbles in here because I was cutting the Glenda edges out of these these pieces. So I say that and then I never follow through with it. Okay. So there's the exteriors for the flaps for that one. So in this case, this is the lining piece for like the orange. Um, and what I will do is I'll place the stabilizer under this piece once I get this interfacing cut out. It will not be going on the like pretty exterior side of it. I'm just gonna interface this whole piece because that's gonna be two wallet fronts. And basically, I'm going to fussy cut the books out of this obi. And then there's the flaps as well for the interior underneath. And that's looking pretty even. So I'm going to... No, I can fit one more piece on there. I'm going to fit this piece right here because that lines it up with this on this end. Is it perfect? No, it's interfacing. That's fine. All right. Come here, my pretties. Let's get you your interfacing. Gonna go up here, and then these are lining for pockets because this wallet does have a zip pocket. And then, yeah, I think I said at the beginning, but I'll whatever, I'll repeat myself because it's like if you are jumping in in the middle of this or you're not watching the whole thing or whatever. The Glendas are basically done. The three that I cut out and prepped on stream last week. Um, I got them all sewn up. I think I sewed them on stream mostly too. So you can check that out on my channel. Uh, the last thing left on them is I need to actually get some silver rivets. I've got gold right now, which works for most things. But it's not going to work for a cup with for the ones that are like gray. Okay, so in this case, this is going under here. There we go. And then it'll get sewn, it'll get interfaced, and then it'll get sewn onto the other piece afterwards. Ooh. 
you do need some extra space because there is not enough room. Not enough seam allowance. That's already a pretty tight seam allowance. Oh, Katie. What are you doing? Okay, we're good. There's enough there, but it is tight. Of course. Okay. <laughs> All right. Stay. Behave yourself. So next cut. Looking at this, I think I'm going to actually transfer my curtain rod holder over to the other side because it was easier to pull across than it is to pull up. I don't know. It's easier to cut it. These are like the little adjustments that have to happen as you're using stuff, though. Like, you can plot and plan and think that it's ideal, but then it's like in use. There's different ways, different things that come up. Yeah, yeah, come here. There we go. I'm really excited for these wallets. They are going to look spectacular, I think. And I feel like a wallet is a really good use for this fabric as well, in my opinion. Oh, and there's lots of fabric there, so I don't have to worry about any of the seam allowances or the fold over edge there or anything. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now, this is a situation where a lot of these pieces will be laid out on the steam press at the same time. I'm actually going to set them, I'm going to press them separately from the paper stuff, though. Just why? I don't know. I don't know. These need, this needs two, because that is going to be two wallets. Apparently, I, okay, I misplaced, a, ugh, like I said, it's just, it's been one of those weeks, I misplaced one of those stabilizers, so I was like, well, I can, I'll just make six wallets, that's fine, that's a lot of wallets, especially considering how long it's taken me to do this stuff, <laughs> and the limited amount of time I have left until the show, so it's worked out. But I just found one of the stabilizers. That's annoying. Oh, well, I can use it for a cotton one if I want later on. It's not like stabilizer is going to go bad. So it's all good. Okay. Turn this one down just a touch. Go. All right. So there is that one. And then we've got two more. Or one more to do the exterior for, and then what is left? Looks like pockets, because I don't want stiff pockets. Mostly, well, I don't want stiff pockets because once you put the stiffness of the card slot pockets in the wallet, it actually adds a lot of body, and I feel like adding the paper interfacing to the interior pockets will mean that there is too much. Just too much. It's too much. And that's fine. Okay. So there is another flap lining piece from our kimono. And it's going to get this. And then it goes on. This That swirl is going to go on the back of this piece. Like that. And then this is the extra one. So we're going to put it over in the shelf here. So that's just where I'm storing all the extra stabilizer right now. And then, okay. What are you guys? You look like you're probably interior pockets, right? Please tell me you're interior pockets. Yeah, okay. Interior with a little bit extra, so they need to be squared up once we put the interfacing on them. Alrighty. Or they could be card slot pocket backings. I don't know. One of the two. They are involved in the making of these wallets somehow. I'm like 95% sure I cut all the pieces I need to. So as long as they're in that pile, they'll get interfaced and then I'll figure it out later. I feel like that's a good motto for this sometimes is like, just figure it out as you go later. Figure it out later. <sighs> that would actually, this piece looks like it would go on one of the already off cut pieces very well. Yes, it would. So we will... Oh no, because I don't have it's that's paper interfacing. Never mind. Go. I'm gonna do this right here. That'll even things up pretty well. Try and get some of the like stitching threads out of here. Da da da. There we go. So yeah, my goal is to get everything interfaced at least today. 
And then, what am I going to do? Tomorrow, I, I will actually do a stream, stream, a scheduled stream. Tomorrow's Saturday. I will email that out tonight. Just got to chat with my husband what time would be best. I can tell I haven't been talking a lot because my voice is now going hoarse again, even though I just drank some fluids. Anyway, um... Oh, yeah, those are card slot blocks. Yeah, I'll be back on tomorrow to do a full stream. And I do think that will probably be assembly. I might start some of it tonight, depending on how the kids cooperate and just how tonight pans out. So we'll see. But, you know, I can hope and dream. There we go. It looks like some sort of, like, collage wall or something like that. Like, I'm hanging photos in all different directions. I like it. All right, there we go. Slicey slice. And then we're going to go up this direction. Excuse me. Shoop. I'm going to shift that over a little bit. This one can shift that way a little bit and then it's not so in the in the space. And I'm going to go around. Serpentine. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. So much for straight lines on my interfacing. That's okay. Yeah, these are these pieces definitely like shift and move. But like I said, I don't want to interface the whole thing because obviously I'm using it for different purposes, and for different purposes I end up having to do different interfacings. So I can't do it all at once. Although it's extremely tempting because if I could just pull a kimono or obi apart and just do it all at once, it would be amazing. But that's okay. That's actually a task I could give my husband. Actually, he could do this quite easily. Today, though, he's working on the front yard and stuff like that. So that's good. And tomorrow, he'll look after the kids for me instead. So, And then since it's a long, mon long weekend Monday, he'll take care of the kids on Monday because they're out of childcare. <laughs> I did get my youngest an extra day for August, though. So he, uh, they're going to be going quite a bit because then I can take best advantage of my eldest's summer camp so oh all right we just i was like i could put this i just I was like i could put this on the piece that i've already cut off but no i can't because that's paper interfacing and this is light interfacing okay it does feel like my throat is done i need to go grab some water so i'll finish these couple cuts go grab some water and i'll be right back okay, go One, two, three I'll just mute the mic so you can't hear it. Clip off. All right, now that it's in here, that will be way easier. Just take a drink when I need to. And yeah, because it's clearing up my throat very well. All right. Paper, light interfacing. I don't know why I have those in two separate piles. It really doesn't matter at this point because it's like, you're going to get what you're going to get. What you're going to get is what I've cut. <laughs> All right, so there is, oh, I need zipper tabs from the red. Okay, well, that is something I can do later. That's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to stop the process right now to cut them. So it looks like I probably have one more round trip cutting here. That and that. I just realized I should put this to not do not disturb a theater. There it is. Yeah, so we've uh, decided that we will be moving my youngest, however, to the preschool that my eldest is at. Uh, they're doing really well in the day home, and it's nothing against the day home. But it's just for our ease of, like, the mornings are... It'll be nice to have them in one spot, because then we can just drop off super easy. Pick up is going to be another story entirely, but drop off at least should be easier. Um... I feel really bad, though, because it's just, like, he's doing, like, 
they're doing so well in the day home. They've got friends and stuff like that, but I'm just like, I need it to be just a little bit easier than it is right now. And my eldest is absolutely thriving at the preschool. So like, it's not that I don't want the youngest at the preschool either at the same, like on the flip side. Okay, that's a little bit too large for up there. I'll put it down here. But anyway, I gave them, I gave the day home provider a massive heads up because it's just like, if people are looking, you may as well take advantage of it. Um, because I know a lot of them are already looking for, like, for the new year. So, <clears throat> which is when, because my youngest is too young for the preschool right now. Preschool is like, what well, can they start in like September? Because they might be old enough. And I was like, no, not quite. <laughs> we, we'll wait for the extra couple months till like January, February, which hopefully works out for everyone involved. Even if there's a little bit of gap in care, that's fine. Though I would prefer for the youngest to stay as long as possible because they are the hardest one to entertain um, while I'm working. My eldest will just like give them an iPad and they're like, yeah, I'm good for like three quarters of the day. But my youngest is not. And that's fine, too. That's actually good. But it's just like, oh, they're definitely they're the one who went into care first because we found them a space first. And they are the one that need the care the most, too. For my sake. <laughs> definitely for my sake. All right. That is this is the last of the interfacing cuts and now we're going to heat up the steam press here in a moment and we will press all of these on there i don't normally interface the zipper tabs but because the kimono are so light fabric i'm going to interface them just to add some stability to them again it's a high use product um because these are going to be wallets so i want to make sure that they are as stable as i can make them with my current knowledge and skills Obviously, knowledge and skills are always evolving, or they should be. Um, so, yeah, so this is to my current best abilities, obviously. All right. And across. And then we'll do the red zipper tabs later, because, like I said, I just don't want to break up my flow right now. <laughs> and then I might be able to actually use the red and white zipper tabs. We'll see. <coughs> Depends on which one I need the zipper tabs for, because I can't remember. I, I have it written down kind of what I'm using everything for, but, you know, if I can read my own handwriting is another conundrum some days. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's cut this down. Actually, I'm going to pop the steam press on. Still a little bit warm, but it'll get warmed up while I finish the rest of these cuts. There we go, and then we're going to turn this because that's what's going to work the best. And there is a little bit of extra fabric in these, I know. Excuse me. Oh my goodness. Okay. And the last one. I definitely need coffee or something. I am going to text my husband and be like, hey, can you bring me coffee when you get home from the gym, please? This is not going to work otherwise. Go. And shoop. Ha ha. We did it. We've done it, guys. Again. Yay. So let's get these pressed and ready to go for their next cutting. Because basically now what i got to do is... I need to interface everything, and then I need to cut it. Except for the flaps. The flaps don't need to be cut. I'll just zip around the stabilizer. But the circular bits for the exterior do need to be cut. Actually, I wonder if I can if I should move the steam press up here. That might be easier for like me. As long as it's got enough long enough cable, I think it'll work. Okay, so these all need to be pressed. Let's just kind of shuffle them over here. And then I'm gonna move you over here because then I don't whack you with the steam press. Hopefully. I feel like that's gonna work. That's just gonna work better. I do like the fact that I have a table to set it on, but since there is a significant amount of pressing, actually I could grab a chair 
and have a seat and do the pressing as well. So that would be nice. There's all the other light interfacing pieces. This is all the big. Oh, yeah. No, I definitely want a seat for this because those, because of the length of them, are going to take multiple press times. Okay. We need the pressing cloth. And then we need to get this off the table and around if I can. That's the water for it. I can lock it, hopefully. Lock and see. Okay, that's not hot on the back. Good. Do you have a long enough? Oh yes, because it's on an yes, it's on an extension cord. Okay. It's angry because I closed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'll open you back up. Okay. Now there's this chair back there, but I've got a clear one in the other room, so I'll be right back for with that. Alright, I am back. I need to answer a couple texts and uh, stuff while this is heating up. It did sound like it was probably done, but I'll give it a couple more minutes. And there's a couple like timed things I need to do. And my youngest is up and playing, which is super awesome. And I need to. <laughs> and then there's nothing else going on. Alrighty, there we go. I didn't realize I've been streaming for two or an hour and a half. Sorry, I was answering some texts there. Just some timed stuff that does actually need to happen while I'm waiting for stuff to warm up. I'm pretty sure this is warm now. Is it? Oh, no, it's not. Because I didn't set it to the proper... Okay, there we go. Now we're good. When I moved it up, it was freaking out because, of course, um, I'd locked it. And uh, so I was like, oh, no, I'm going to overheat. Even though it was only like two minutes worth of locking. Uh, I did bring it up on the cutting table because uh, now I can sit down and press instead of having to stand and press. So a little bit easier. And there's quite a bit of pressing to do now. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is these super long panels that I've got on top here for the card slots. Um, these, this is going to become two card slots, not one card slot, which will actually help. And honestly, I probably could have cut them down. But again, it's so it's like the silk moves and shifts so much. This is why I wanted to actually do it all in one big piece, because then when I cut it down, it'll be a square and better. Now we're going to spread it as far as we can. This is part of the reason why I wanted to press before I did interfacing, because then I can just kind of Spread it out here, like that. And Dahlia is now quality control inspecting the table back here, because, you know, why not? All right, there. Now we'll throw the pressing cloth on top of it, and that's going to help set it. And then I don't have to worry about it, like, slipping off. Um, and I might do a few of these. All no, I don't, these have to be done one by one. All right, down it goes. 
this steam press has been such a lifesaver, <laughs> even when I'm not using the steam. Um, I would have never been able to do this, like, consistently with an iron. So if you're a seamstress or you do a lot of pressing, look into getting a steam press. I got mine actually secondhand off of Facebook Marketplace. I'd been, like, watching for one for a few months um, on the recommendation of Mishnok, the lady who makes bags from the Harris Tweed Tartans. And, uh, yeah, it was just, it's so much better. Okay, I think I can actually do now the press in this direction mostly. It'll have to have like a double press on this side too, but uh, that's fine. We'll deal with it. Okay, so that's as wide as it's going to go. So we'll do all one, like half, then we'll do the other half. And it's okay if it's crooked on the interfacing. It's just, it'll make it easy. It, uh, my cuts won't be crooked then when I actually go to finish the cutting for the actual card slot pocket. This is like the boring part of this though, is that's the waiting. And then that's why it's like with iron, I wouldn't have the patience to wait for the iron to actually adhere correctly. And uh, once I started making the kato, which they're like the main body of the, all of those pieces has to be interfaced with interfacing so that the fabric matches the canvas. Um, yeah, no, I was kind of hooped. I needed something. That was going to consistently adhere the <laughs> adhere it correctly, just because it saves so much time. Now you don't, you can obviously buy this new. My main thing with buying it off marketplace is I didn't know if it would actually do what I needed it to do, or if I had enough projects where I needed a steam press. Um, but it has proven it's worth already, and so when this one eventually wears out, which they do because they won't heat up fast enough or hot enough anymore. Um, I'll be purchasing one brand new. So it's just how it goes. And I've only had it since February, I think, or something like that. And it's just been like, like I said, it's already like proven it, or uh, been worth its while. So <clears throat> All right. get on there, please. Cool. There we go. Sweet. Oh yeah, this looks really good now. Um, so the fabric is gorgeous, but you can't really see it when it's all like crumpled up and everything. But now that it's like spread out and flat, it looks so good. I'm just excited. Hopefully it'll show up on camera so I can show you here in a few minutes. Now, typically I will put more than one layer of stuff to interface but uh, like I said what's happening right now is it's like because the fabrics are so slippy slidey um, I only want to do one at a time just so I can like make sure that it's adhering correctly and not getting folded under and all of that that's actually what I'm doing and why I'm doing it this way versus multiples at one time now when I get into like the pocket stuff and things we can do multiples at one time no big deal but for now, one piece at a time. So I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks. Typically, I would be listening to an audiobook while I'm doing this sort of thing, because again, tedious. <laughs> um, but, and I'm not using that word necessarily as a bad word. <coughs> it's just, it's what it is. It's work that's just kind of like, it's repetitive. It's, and like, I have to be engaged, but like not so much that's taking up my full brain power. Anyway, it is an excellent audiobook um, time, but obviously with the stream, I don't listen to audiobooks. Anyway, I finished, or I'm very near finishing Chasing Cassandra by Lisa Claypass, uh, which is the Ravenel series. I'm listening to that on Scribd, Scribd, however you want to pronounce it. Um,. And I don't know what I'm going to listen to next. I'm kind of at that point where it's like, okay, what do I do next? So that's like, Jason Cassandra is the last book in basically a, I think it's Regency. No, it's later than Regency. It's like almost the turn of the century, like 18th to 19th century. A historical royalty romance. Smut, basically. And so I'm almost done that, and I don't know what I want to read next. I re-listened to The Ghost Bride by Yang Shi Chu. 
recently, which I always really enjoy that book. Um, it's read by the author, which is super cool. Um, and I might actually re-listen to The Night Circus, which is read by Jim Dale, by Aaron Morgenstern, and it's also very good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, this is the time of year where I usually also re-listen to An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. But I don't know if I'm feeling like doing that right now. That was like the first book that I listened to that was new. Um, because before that, I'd been listening to audiobooks of books that I had read. Because I found that my concentration had to be more on the sewing. And now I'm able to listen to the book and do the sewing. Um, so that The Enchantment of Ravens was the first book that I listened to new while I was sewing. So it's always got like a soft place in my heart sort of thing. But uh, I don't know if I feel like listening to it this year. I do also, I have also listened to, and I might re-listen to, The Queen's Resistance. It's a duology. There's The Queen's something by um, Becca J. Ross. Her books are always really good so far. And uh, so maybe I'll listen to that again. Because I like it. Because it's like, main character is not the queen. Which is amazing like what would typically be described as a side character to be honest but anyway it's just it's really good I do enjoy that series so maybe that's what I'll listen to next it's a little bit more chill it's like real YA new adult romance but it's not like explicit it's just a nice cozy read I guess I guess that's what I would qualify it as I don't know we'll see until I'm getting tired all right, so I think that was the end of that one, right? Is that adhered? Ooh, that needs to be lifted and put down again because it crinkled. Come here, my pretty. I know you can do better than that. Okay, let's redo that little tiny bit. It'll be fine to redo it. There we go. Obviously, you want the interfacing adhered. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to re-adhere it. The benefit to this, though, is it's also going to get sewn over. So it will be, it's not like it's going to be loose interfacing or anything like that. That would be annoying and dumb. Okay, let's do that. Excuse me, oh my goodness. Okay, right. back in there like that. Like that. And we're going to go poof. And I'm not going to do it for the full time because it's already still really hot. There we go. And good. That's better. That's kind of better. I will I can work with it. All right. <coughs> now we need to get this side interfaced. It's one problem with these card slot pockets is they're so big. I feel like this is really wide compared to what it actually needs to be. I feel like I probably cut the fabric. But the thing about it is, is like, what am I going to do with the other piece? I guess in this case, actually, I'm probably going to end up with enough to do a key fob or like wristlet or something like that. So that's probably what we'll do. And then, yeah, that's a good plan, actually. So that's it's going to take a while. What time is it? Order off to two. So in this case, I'll probably keep talking and streaming till about three. Um, probably not to the end of the interfacing, just because everyone, including myself, would get bored with that. Um, I think. Unless you want like an ASMR kind of one. I don't know. All right, where did that finish interfacing? That finished interfacing right about there. So I think there. The deck is, OK, so the deck is two lengths, basically case. Sweet. And then we're going to shimmy down that fold at the end because now we know it's there. And then we're going to clamp it without getting my finger because that would suck. I don't know. Maybe we'll keep chatting. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a boring stream since I don't... Ooh, sorry. That was probably loud since I was leaning in close. Anyway, there's not much for me to talk about. So I think actually I am going to end it here. 
Um, typically, I would go a little bit longer without the kids home, but like I said, this is this is boring. <laughs> this is this is just the the in between work. And what I'll do is I'll get it all done. Then I'll come back on tomorrow. I'll let you know that in advance. I'll actually schedule the stream. And so you can see that on the YouTube channel. And tomorrow we'll be working on actually assembling the wallets. Because um, I just feel like this is... Without new stories to tell, this is boring. So I hope you guys all have a fantastic night. And I will chat with you all very soon. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye. Mm-hmm.